Well, the Andor show continues to surprise me in positive ways. I still don't love everything about it, but overall it's a really great show that I definitely have a lot of fun watching. But first, I'm going to start with a couple things that I'm not a big fan of. I still don't like that guy Cyril, the imperial, pseudo-imperial, becoming imperial, whatever he is. That guy, he's just not a great actor, not that interesting of a character to me, doesn't really fit into the story anywhere, and I know a lot of people love him, but I just don't get it. <laughs> Maybe someday he'll become really intense and become a really high-level Imperial or rise through the ranks or something like that, but even if they do that, I still don't think I'll like him that much. So if you like him, let me know why in the comments. Or if you don't like him, also let me know why. And the other part that I wasn't really a fan of here was Space Florida from the most recent episode. Um, I don't exactly know what they're going for. I guess it's mostly something about Andor taking the money and running and just trying to ignore his troubles and escape everything and not think about anything and just completely leave the fight and the galaxy, basically. But it's interesting to me that he would go to a clearly Imperial-dominated planet <laughs> as part of that plan. And also just the idea of a kind of casual, goofy, very Earth-looking Space Florida, as people are calling it, is just not a very Star Wars concept or very interesting concept to me. And everything looked really cheap, even the shore trooper costumes and there were just random aliens wearing regular t-shirts and then the scene where he's convicted seemed like something out of the movie Idiocracy more than Star Wars and it didn't even show the Imperials as really intense or scary or anything like that it's more just like they're so stupid they don't even care and they just throw random people in jail forever all the time on this planet which he shouldn't be at because it's already Imperial controlled and yeah, the whole Space Florida sequence was basically meaningless and honestly should have just been skipped. If Andor left, we don't even see where he goes and then he just comes back later and says, I changed my mind. I think that would have been better. Anyway, with those two things out of the way, I think these most recent episodes were actually really, really good and just as good as the previous ones that had made me finally change my mind, episode three and four. Episodes 5 through 7 really bring out a lot of that political drama on Coruscant and the tension inside the rebellion and one of the best heist sequences that I've ever seen. It's like the quality of a movie that they put into the show, especially for that heist sequence and the build up to it. And I would almost rather prefer it as a movie, I think, where instead of all these random storylines, most of which are kind of boring and uninteresting to me, um, happen simultaneously woven together, especially from the first two episodes. I think it would have been, or it at least would be interesting to see just this kind of focused story on Andor in movie form. So imagine starting with episode three, you just have Andor, you meet Marva, and then he's picked up into the rebellion, ignore all the Empire stuff, the Cyril stuff, even the Coruscant stuff, somewhat and just focus on the heist see all of that go down and then watch the aftermath on Coruscant that would be a really fascinating movie and it's great that they put it into this tv show although you know there is some filler in there still but like Rogue One of course they did take some guts here and a lot of characters died in these episodes especially during the heist itself so that was you know something that most people might not expect but coming from that Rogue One angle that Andor does, it's not surprising. It's more like shocking in a way that it should be, which is, of course, the best way to do it for a show like this. And the drama with Luthen and Mon Mothma and trying to recruit people and questioning, should we build up the rebellion? How much should we build up the rebellion? All of those really fascinating questions are something great for this show to dive into because that's not something you really get much in the rest of Star Wars, even in the EU. So it's really good that they have that in the show. 
and it's interesting to watch, especially because it makes the rebels and the good guys a lot more in the gray area in the middle, especially as they're starting out in the beginning. And then you can kind of see that tension between all these different rebel factions coalesce into what eventually becomes that sort of Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker rebellion, which is a lot more wholesome and generally good, at least in their portrayal, even if they still do some questionable things occasionally. And I do feel that, not always, but a lot of the time, the production value has also increased quite a bit. The CGI is pretty good, the sound design is pretty good, the acting, or at least the actors in the scenes, are a lot better in general now compared to the first two episodes. And I think it is moving in a positive direction, which is good, because I think there's a lot more of the show to go on into season one, and then later into season two. And while I can do without the serial side plot, and I'm not a fan of the Space Florida scene, which should just be cut, in my opinion, um, especially because it made the Shore Troopers look stupid, which they shouldn't be, because that's not a good way to introduce your Storm Troopers in a show that's such a slow burn. But other than all that, I feel there's not even that much to say about the show. Some parts of it are filler or bad and fail, but most of it is just good Star Wars, and it's a good story and good production quality, and I think the fact that I don't have that much specific to comment on, other than just the general goodness of it, is probably the highest praise I could give a show like this, especially these days. So I think I'll talk a little bit about that, actually. So many shows these days try so hard to just get that big hype train going and have all these very on-the-nose metaphors and trying to push the boundaries of technology but not having the budget for it and ending up looking fake and trying all these new techniques and new writers and styles and just kind of breaking the original style and making things worse. And with all of that together, when you compare that to most of Andor, the Andor show is really a step backwards in a good way. It really goes back to basics a lot more, and it has a lot more fundamental Star Wars and also just general storytelling skills, where you have actually very interesting good characters, especially during the heist, and some interesting unexpected but intense death scenes, again, especially during the heist, and some really good CGI and sound design and storytelling again of course especially during the heist if you couldn't tell already that was definitely my favorite episode in the entire show so far and i wish that the rest of the show had more of that but yeah overall andor is just a really really solid interesting look at star wars from kind of an angle that we don't normally get and some parts of it don't work at all and some parts of it are very questionable but still, looking at it from this angle and with this level of show quality, it's definitely something that's worth watching and something that I would recommend to people. But it's interesting because despite this show being so good in so many different unique ways, it actually has online not that great reviews and not that much viewership, it would seem. Like, the hype around the show is a lot less than I was expecting even compared to Kenobi. Like, for me, even from the trailers, this show looked a lot more interesting and Star Wars-y than Kenobi did, and watching it, definitely I would rather rewatch this than almost anything from Kenobi. Kenobi had some really high good moments, like Vader talking to Obi-Wan at the end, and Obi-Wan seeing that homeless clone trooper, and just little moments like that that really brought a lot of life to the show. But overall, Kenobi was kind of dark, shaky cam, stale, bland, not really going anywhere. You know, it just goes in a circle with a character we already know. <laughs> and so it wasn't that interesting. Whereas Andor has so many unique characters who are so interesting right from their first one or two episodes. And a lot of them die in like their first few episodes that they're even in or they're kicked out of the story only to maybe come back later, and there's just a lot more drama there. So I'm shocked that so many people seem to not be very hyped about the show anymore, or not have that much interest in it anymore. 
And that could be due to the first two episodes being so slow and so bad that people never got past it. Like for myself, the only reason I made it to episode three is because of my YouTube channel. <laughs> if I didn't have this, I don't know I would have gone back and tried to watch more even if other people told me to. So Disney really messed up there and that's probably why they released the first three episodes on the first day, to try to encourage people to watch them all, even if it maybe didn't work. But the other problem is the Star Wars fatigue, which isn't really Star Wars fatigue, but more like fatigue at watching Star Wars content that has no soul. When Disney just pumps out show after show after show with no real plan and just low budgets and no writing, no editing, all this shaky cam and dark images and no tension, there's not a lot going on in the show to get you excited or to get you interested. And I'm sure that a lot of people watching, you know, some parts of Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi and all these other Disney shows, even watching some of the Marvel stuff recently, just a lot of people are not that interested anymore in Disney Plus shows. So hopefully Andor can maintain its momentum, hopefully it can build on its momentum, and hopefully it will be able to help turn the tide a little bit so that it actually can be that big, hyped up, amazing Star Wars show that it eventually deserves to be once it cleans up a little bit around the edges. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Click a video on screen if you want more Star Wars analysis. And until next time, this is Deep Dive, signing off.